Hey there. Happy holidays, everybody. I want to take this opportunity to talk about family today. Um, family is a very complex and fraught topic for discussion, uh, I think, no matter who you're talking to. Um, but family for me has been extremely important for my personal journey, um, a little bit of a measuring stick of my progress and growth but also the catalyst for my progress and growth uh, in many different and diverse ways. The first way that I want to begin to think about family is family as a teacher. Um, I think that this is an intended consequence of the way that we build relationships with our families um, on a societal level. I think it's been understood for a long time that the family is going to be the main uh, interface for all humans when they enter the world to be educated on how to live in the world. So our first teaching from our family usually has been a pretty unconscious one, right? There's a, a tiny child that has gone through the trauma of being born and is now just trying to deal with the constant sense stimulus of existence. And then a family that's got whatever baggage it's bringing to the table and is trying as best, it's, as best it can as a unit, however big it is, however small it is, to help this this new life grow into itself. So this, the first teaching that we tend to receive, you know, up until our own personal adulthood is one of receiving, one of kind of passively receiving the programming given to us. So we have very little to say about this. We're usually in interaction with it much more than we're aware of what the teaching is. It's only once we <clears throat> once we reach adulthood or something that approximates adulthood, that we start to have experiences which give us, you know, more and more understanding of ourselves, the world around us, how we want to interact with the world, how we want to engage with the world. And that is dictated in a lot of instances by the types of experiences that we choose to have once our lives are our own. And then that's when the family becomes the second teaching, the second teacher, which is more of a measuring stick against which we judge our past, we judge our present, and in some ways, you know, maybe we can aim our future. Um, but for a lot of us with fraught relationships with family, fraught relationships with what we've been taught in the first teaching, the second teaching can be a challenge for us in varying different ways. So coming into that understanding of, well, this is the way I grew up, but now I've maybe been able to see that, that maybe some of these things over here were actually a little bit less joyful or a little bit more toxic or a little bit less toxic or a little bit more joyful than I had originally been able to appreciate when I was younger, when I was still in this unconscious phase of learning. I was passively receiving. So as we kind of cross through that line and, and gaining perspective and appreciation and understanding, we can judge pretty clearly, you know, are some aspects of this toxic, are some aspects of this you know, whole and healthy. And how do we now with this new understanding, this new understanding of ourselves, choose to interact with these dynamics that were set up unconsciously by everybody involved until now? So this idea of if something doesn't feel good, do I have the bravery? Do I have the skill? Do I have the, the, the opportunity? to shift the baseline of, of something that might not be optimal for all parties involved towards something that is more optimal for parties, all parties involved. That's a very complex practice to begin for all of us. So 
for me, that started in earnest when I was able to get right with the concept of ancestors and descendants, ancestors and descendants. And that is a very personal journey for every one of us. Some of us don't even know that we are in a position to have a relationship with our ancestors through cultural connection or historical connection until somebody brings that to our attention these days. Because more often than not, our ancestral lines have been cut off, right? Um, you know, I grew up with a, with a deep awareness of my Sicilian and my, my Irish and my German heritage and the cultural, the cultural receiving that I got mixed with the American cultural receiving, right, of modern American culture. So, and, and watching the way those things interact led me into some of my first awarenesses of meeting and coming into relationship with the ancestors, those who historically led to my being. Some complex stuff on, on a lot of levels. But this idea that like, I am loved by a thousand generations of people that I've never met was very helpful for me. The idea that as I move forward in time, I am merely actually just a, a part of a line. And then I will fall away and become a part of the line that moves forward into the descendants that come after me. And so I will then be their ancestor and they will be my descendants. And so we pass from present into past, always progressing through our line line into the future. So as I have decided for myself to be an ancestor to the future descendants and to be a descendant of my past ancestors, so to, to exist on this line, for me, this has become where I derive my patience. <laughs> this has become where I derive my empathy, my understanding that impersonally can I love these people, regardless of where I'm at. Can I have the patience to say, this dynamic, this relationship, this, this connection that I have with this person might not be what I want it to be today, but it could be if I have the courage, the skillfulness, the patience, the consistency to restore, to heal the connection to restore the relationship over however long that takes. And in some instances, it's gonna take lifetime, right? It's gonna take lifetimes, maybe even. But this idea that we're, I'm gonna move from my first learning into my second learning of the family, moving from maybe toxicity toward wholeness and health, for me, this dipping my toe back in, checking in, does this make me feel okay? Does this make me feel safe? Does this make me feel protected if the dynamic is particularly toxic? Am I able to enter from a place of objective love? Am I able to have the love for myself, the love for my, my ancestor, my living ancestor, to say, hey, this isn't really about us. This is about the whole thing. So can we have the patience and the empathy with each other to try to say, let's, let's break this down. Let's break down what has been and build what we want. Have the, our relationship be about who we are as opposed to who we received. Whose breath am I breathing? Right? It's mine. It's my breath. It's my choice. And so... Can I have faith in this person? Can I have faith in myself? Can I hope that we are moving toward a better way? And can I love the situation so much that I bring about that better way just through my love, through my interaction, through my holding? And so hope, faith, and love. Family, ancestors, holidays, gratitude, all these things are, are what we're dealing with right now, challenged by right now. And 
for all of us who are struggling with those things, for all of us who are struggling to move into a new reality with the people we love, I wish you all a beautiful, a blessed, a grateful, silent if necessary, <laughs> or full of people and celebration if necessary, um, holiday. And uh, holiday season and every holiday into the future. So thank you so much. Happy holidays.